Okay, so Electro Cookie contacted me recently about their Raspberry Pi cases and some of their accessories they do. They've sent me all of this in the post. This is the case I was definitely interested in, first of all, because it has a door. Now, it's such a simple thing, but if, like me, you often change your operating system on a Raspberry Pi 5, it's super valuable. So obviously it's going to be good for keeping dust out when the door is closed, but when you want to change that drive, now, it only supports 2242 and 2230 size drives. So we have a look here. And that's because of the way it's mounted. It's quite clever, really, because they've mounted it around the fan. So the CPU is going to stay cool, but you still have an NVMe drive. And, yeah, I just really like the look of it. And I thought the price was good as well. And I like the fact that you can mount it in horizontal mode as well. I thought that looked pretty cool. So these three bags are all the same NVMe drives three of these cases, and this case as well, but I might have a look at that in another video, or this video, depends how long this takes. They also sent me a load of fans, uh, an LED display, and also some way of customizing the case as well. Okay, so let's have a look inside. So instructions, so here's the heat sink, and obviously the place for the fan. We've got some thermal pads for the heat sink. We've got a fan, some rubber feet, which I always like rubber feet for a case. Okay, so I've got my 16 gig Pi 5. It's got the official Raspberry Pi 5 fan connector, which is always handy. So it means it'll be temperature controlled by most operating systems. And it's even got little rubber washers that go between the fan and the metal, obviously to cut down on vibration. As shown in the manual here, so let's line these up. and they screw directly into the heatsink. So if we turn this around, you can see them here. I've unscrewed them a bit because I want them to be pretty much flush here. And they cover the power supply with this pink thermal pad, the CPU with this gray one, and blue for the Wi-Fi chip. So we need to remove the protective film from the top of all these. And let's pop this on, so it's this way around. Just lining it up with the holes underneath. And it uses these springy push pins. I'm not a big fan of these because they're not super easy to take off. But they do work and they do use them on the official Raspberry Pi fan as well. And the second one, it's got a very long fan cable. So that's those four in place. And the Pi goes this way around. So we can see the power switch here. Quite a big power switch. So four of these bolts go on. Uh, I put the wrong ones on. Because I'm using the NVMe hat, I need longer ones in place here. But it's shorter ones if you're not using it. So they come in the bag with the NVMe. One dot two hat. So you can see this board with a 2242 thread in place, but it also has an adapter for a 2230 as well. And this is where we get the longer standoffs from, which are actually easier to fit. PCIe cable needs to go in place now. Make sure it's nice and straight. So four more of these little screws. I can see it's got five volt input, so there is a power input to this board. Now, I've certainly found with some other boards that that definitely helps if you plug in lots of drives, um, but if you've got just the one NVMe drive, it's absolutely fine. But if you plug in uh, extra external drives, then sometimes you need a bit of extra power. So that option's there. Would have been nice to see that little cable supplied. How does this go? Oh, I can see power switch goes through there. Got two cats helping me now. Whoa! <laughs> oh, right, you're going down. Oh, quick! And this bit slots on as well. I like that. That's nice and easy. And these super long screws. And the door just pops in like that. Nice. Then we've got these two for either end. I think these are the bits that I've been sent the custom bits from. So obviously this one just says Electro Cookie on it. 
and this one has got the spaces for all the ports and these are where the customization comes in. I'm going to use the stock ones for now because that's how you would buy it as a normal case but these customizable ones come with a fan and also two fans as options. So this must go on here. So that's that one in place. And then this front part goes on. So it comes with a screw to fix the drive in place. You can see here the 2242 already has a thread but the 2230 doesn't so you have to put this part in and then you can use a 2230 drive in there and secure it in place. I've only got one 2230 drive. I've got loads of 2242 so this definitely suits me. What happens with a 2280? Is it usable? So if I try and fit it in place. Okay, no, it doesn't quite fit a 2280. That's a bit of a shame, but uh, obviously most of my drives are 2242. And you could maybe, uh, because this is just screwed on, so I could elongate that if I wanted to. I could put some pins in here to extend it. Might be worth looking at. And can also leave this out, actually. Yeah, so if I left that out. So without this part, I can definitely fit one in. Obviously, it has to be loose like this because there's nowhere to secure it. But that's another take on it. So one of the customization options would maybe to put a hole into one of this so that you have access to be able to put that drive in. They do show other options on the Amazon link here though. So you can see the one I've got here, the Electro Cookie Shield, there's an X1001 and also an X1015. And because they're oriented differently, they can fit a 2280 on there. And so if that's the case, if you already have one of these and you want a 2280, uh, and by the way, it works with the Raspberry Pi M.2 hat as well, you can, at least on the American site, buy it just as a case. So $19.99 comes without the M.2. So if you're going to use the Raspberry Pi AI hat, or if, you're to, if you've already got one that may fit, then you have that as an option. And I've got loads of M.2 hats for Raspberry Pi 5. So this one uh, has got holes in it, so it doesn't add as much cooling as the Electro Cookie one. Uh, but it does allow for a 2280. Uh, this is the one that they showed in their Amazon link. Now I've sort of clumsily put it on the back of this case. Uh, it's not great, but it certainly was handy for me to be able to easily change it. And I also supplied power to the board as well because I use it a lot and I plug in lots of drives. So I can do exactly the same to this. So I can have a couple of GPIO pins uh, from the 5 volt and the negative onto here and that's going to power the board separately so it means it can handle other drives and devices better with that extra cable and to be fair you can just use these sort of standard ones uh, that's all I've done just a brown and a red one it is a very neat option I do really like it right let's take this out and I'm going to put in my I think I've got KD Neon on here at the moment And I can put this one back on now. So that's all back together. Now in the pictures, they show it with feet on the base. But that does mean that you have to pick it right up to get access to the SD card slot. So I think I'm more likely to mount it this way around. But they've done something clever when it's mounted like this. So you can see that the ports are on the top in this orientation. Uh, and also things like the power in and the HDMI are here. GPIO access, if you took this out, would be there. But they've put a power switch here, but it's also accessible here as well. I think that's quite cool. So I'm going to put the feet so that it's oriented this way. Okay, so yeah, lovely and stable as I thought it would be. So that's the one for me. SD card slot on this side, I've got the ports on this side, and the power in and the HDMI's on the back. That actually works really well. So I can put my nail in here to open this door and then I've got access to my drive. 
cooling wise you can see that the fan is going to be taking air away I mean I guess you could use it either way around um, but it's also got a vent on the back here and also on the side so there's plenty of cooling there let's get it plugged in okay so let's boot up I can press the power button on the side here the light comes on you can see that it's got a color changing fan so that's booting KDE Neon which I wasn't sure if it would work on a 16 gig Raspberry Pi right let's just log in now KDE Neon looks really nice but it was a bit of an experiment and isn't that great in performance on the Raspberry Pi 5 so what I'm going to do is write KDE Plasma my version to it so to do that I'm going to shut this down and I've got this drive which has got my version of KDE Plasma on it but I'm going to write that to the NVMe drive that's in there so let's see if it USB boots so if I plug in this and there we go so now if I start up by pressing the power button and start tapping the spacebar or you can hold yeah that gives me the boot menu so I can pick number four for USB so that will be booting from this drive but I want to write the operating system to the drive that's already in there yep that's booted my version so let's log in and let's call up imager choose OS use custom and KDE 5 choose storage so that's the 128 gig drive that's inside the Pi case it even says 2242 on there look. so let's hit next no and yes pop the password in and come back when that's all done okay that's finished so now I can shut this down remove the USB drive so it's just going to boot from the NVMe that's been newly written and then switch on and that's detected the NVMe drive and it's all booting up it does a double boot because it's first time for a new OS and now we can log in so that's definitely written the OS no problem at all and if I launch P sensor and also if I call up the documents folder because uh, I've got stress test in here so if you download this operating system all of this is always included so under KDE yeah sysbench here and sysbench is already installed so let's copy that let's open a terminal with control alt T and then paste that in and let it do its thing see if we can get that fan moving fast right so where's P sensor that's here let's pop it down here so at the moment 53 degrees on the CPU so the hottest we've got is 56 here and the fan is running only at 2000 rpm so very slow so it's getting a bit hotter 58 and if I call up HTOP as well we can see what the CPU is doing so we're running at 100% at the moment on the CPU so the fan has doubled its speed around about 4000 rpm I can hear it but it's very quiet those rubber feet and also those rubber spacers are probably going to make quite a difference because you're not mounting it on hard plastic or metal I quite like the idea of that and I'm about a foot away from the fan running at 4000 rpm and I can just about hear it it's very quiet in here right let's run another speed test because that's finished so it's good to start from it already being warm so back up to 100% on the CPU all four cores it's still only got the 63 degrees so it's really not heating up very much at all even though it's maxed out okay it's finished I'm immediately going to do another test so keep the pressure on okay and that's just finished doing that test as well so the maximum fan speed 4067 and it's only got to 66 degrees now it's not super warm in here I'd say it's probably about 15 16 in here uh, it's about 10 degrees outside so obviously if you're in a hotter climate your fan is going to work harder and especially if you keep pushing your pie remember we're doing a stress test here but it really didn't get that hot so as a completely plastic case I figured that Wi-Fi would be less affected than some metal cases so if I call up the browser this is now currently connected to my phone you can see my phone there Lee 256 so if I do BBC Sport 
Let's just check if that's working. Oh, it's going a bit slow, but it is working. And uh, part of that will be down to the 4G speed of my phone because it's indoors and we're reasonably far away from a transmitter. But yeah, Wi-Fi is working fine, as expected, really. I mean, obviously, the heatsink could provide a bit of a barrier, uh, but that's an aluminium heatsink and the rest of it's plastic. So yeah, pretty good on that front. Okay, so the SD card slot is accessible. Yeah, easy enough to get the SD card in. To get it out, you do need to use your nail to be able to lever it out, but that is better than some. Now I have enough cooling already, but I figured I might as well fit this fan on to see how it looks. So let's take this off. And let's have a look at this. So it's going to be inside the case. We've got a bit of a cut out there for the fan. Oh yeah, that's fine. So let's just drop that down in there. And because I've got a door, I can locate the GPIO pins. I actually prefer the look of this already. It looks like a hi-fi speaker. So this looks like the base cone and a square or rectangular tweeter. So now I can flip this open and I can get access to the GPIO pins. So I don't even need this extra cooling really uh, in my climate, but if I add on the three volt, which is the, must be this, this way around. So the three volt and the negative, so I'm gonna put those two on. Okay, so those are in place, so three volt and negative. Plenty of room to move it out the way of the NVMe drive. And if I plug it in, Okay, so thanks very much to Electra Cookie for sending me this to test. I really like the door. I've been asking for that on a Raspberry Pi 5 case for quite some time. It's a really good design. The cooling is nice and quiet. Everything is really accessible as well. There'll be links to everything I've shown in the description, and I'll review this in a separate video. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.